Well, good morning and welcome back to our journey through Lent as we are now in the final two weeks toward the crucifixion of Jesus and the celebration of the resurrection on Easter Sunday. Now, in these final days before the crucifixion, Jesus became even more specific in describing to his disciples what was about to take place. But even at this point, their understanding was limited. In Mark chapter 8, Jesus tells the disciples that he must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and then after three days he would rise again. And Mark says that Jesus stated the matter plainly, but Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. And Jesus turned back to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind on man's interests, not God's. Well, at this point, even though the disciples were understanding that Jesus was the promised Messiah of Israel, their understanding of what that really meant was the traditional Jewish understanding of what Messiah would be and what Messiah would do. They thought it meant a literal, physical, militaristic kingdom that would reestablish the greatness of Israel as it was under King David and King Solomon and throw off their pagan occupiers, the Romans. But Jesus kept hinting that as Messiah, it was necessary for him to be rejected by his own people and even be killed. He was the Lamb of God, and he had come to lay his life down for the sin of the world. Well, Jesus then stated what it really meant to be his follower. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life is going to lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now, Jesus was letting them know that not only was he going to be crucified, but they were going to be persecuted, beaten, imprisoned, and even killed for the sake of the gospel. Identifying with him was going to be costly. Were they going to be courageous? Enough to identify themselves as followers of Jesus when there was a cost involved and that cost could very well be their life? Now it's also important to note that Jesus referred to this adulterous and sinful generation. He was speaking specifically about the generation that would bring about his crucifixion, the generation that was about to fill up the measure of the guilt of their fathers. They were about to crucify the Lord of glory. Remember, he wept over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets. How often I would have gathered you to myself, but you were unwilling. Jesus knew what the next two weeks were going to involve. He had come for this purpose. He was willingly laying down his life to accomplish the will of the Father, the Messiah of Israel, the Savior of the world, the Lamb of God. Well, thanks for joining me this morning. And if you don't have a church that you regularly attend, I'd like to invite you to join me today, this morning at 10 a.m. at Metroplex Chapel right here in Euless. And I look forward to being back with you tomorrow as we continue to unpack this new covenant inaugurated by Jesus through the crucifixion and resurrection. I hope you go out and make today a great day. I look forward to seeing you.